Our text for today is from Psalms chapter 3. In fact, it's the entire Psalm chapter 3. It says this, Lord, how many are my foes? How many rise up against me? Many are saying of me, God will not deliver him. But you, Lord, are a shield around me. My glory, the one who lifts my head high, I call out to the Lord and he answers me from his holy mountain. I lie down and sleep. I wake again because the Lord sustains me. I will not fear, though tens of thousands assail me on every side. Arise, Lord, deliver me, my God. Strike all my enemies on the jaw. Break the teeth of the wicked. From the Lord comes deliverance. May your blessing be on your people. This is the word of our Lord. So this psalm was written by David at a time of great duress for David. David was fleeing Jerusalem. So David is older in life at this point, and his son Absalom has decided that he wants to rule the kingdom. And so he has garnered the people's support over years, and now is making his move on Jerusalem. And David got wind of this. He was told about what was happening, realized, I can't win this one. And so he's fleeing Jerusalem. And so when he says, though tens of thousands assail me from every side, he's not really exaggerating. The armies of Absalom are coming after him. It's a bad day. <laughs> Hopefully one that's worse than you've experienced. I hope none of you have been forced out of your house by your children, trying to take over your home. But that's what was going on with David. And David actually had a lot of issues in his family. Right? David, uh, who was called a man after God's own heart, was not perfect. And he had a lot of issues in his family, many of which derived from a sin that he committed with Bathsheba. And then tried to cover up, and then killed her husband to try to cover it up. Like I said, David was not perfect. But he repented. The prophet Nathan comes to David, and he says, David, I, God knows what you've done. And he brings it to David's attention, and David's response is one of repentance. He tears his robe, and he covers himself in ash. And then he's punished. He loses his firstborn with Bathsheba, and he deals with that. But that wasn't the end of the troubles. Right? There were a whole lot of things, and if we were to go through it all, we actually could go through it all, it probably needs an R rating with some of the things that were happening there. A lot of bad things were happening in his family, and now it's all come to roost with Absalom coming together. And you can understand, maybe, if David were running at this point and were fearing for his life and seeing all the problems that happened with his children and say, you know, God, I said I was sorry. You know, you already punished me for these things. What's going on? But he doesn't do that. He turns to God instead and looks to God for his deliverance. He turns to him for his comfort and his strength. It reminded me a little bit of Eli. Eli, a little two-year-old boy who, surprise, surprise, gets in trouble from time to time, being two years old. And he has to be disciplined from time to time. He, of course, does not like that. And he'll cry about it, and he'll, he'll not like what's going on. But the thing that's always amazed me about him, and it tends to be with, with little children like this, is when I come over to him, he comes to me for comfort. Right? He turns to me. I'm the one who's disciplining him. And he doesn't respond with anger but rather with, Daddy, I need a hug. And he turns to me, even though I am the cause of his discomfort, he turns to me for comfort. And he does that because he knows that I love him. He does the same with Melissa. He knows that she loves him. He knows that we will comfort him, that we won't leave him, that he still has to suffer the discipline. That's not his way of escaping that. <laughs> but he is comforted. And that is what David is doing, right? We all face troubles in our lives. 
We all go through hard times, some more difficult than others. And sometimes it's just, it seems very random, right? There's nothing that we've done, there's nothing that's happened. We've been doing our best at our job and all of a sudden the company downsizes and we're out of a job. So what, what's going on here, right? Or, or a loved one goes out to get some groceries and someone runs a red light and everything's changed. Sometimes it's, you can trace it back to our own foolishness. Right? We see the person who was slacking off at work losing their job, or uh, you know, whatever it is that you did, you know, a person robs a bank, they get arrested. You say, well, that's got to earn that. Right? Whether it's something that we think we've earned or not, we have these times of difficulty in our lives. And how is it that we're going to respond is kind of the question I want to talk about today. How do we respond to these times of trial and difficulty? Because I think we kind of have three ways to do it. One is to react to God and say, God, what are you doing? Why are you doing this to me? What have I done to you to cause you to do this to me? And we kind of blame God and put it all on him. Now, similar to that is the other response to God, which is, God, how could you let this happen? Don't you care? Are you even there? And I've seen a lot of people struggle with these things. People who go through very difficult times and wonder, God, what's going on here? And people even walking away from the church or their faith entirely because they didn't like how it was turning out. But there's a third way to respond. And that's the way that we see David responding here, which is to turn to the Lord for his deliverance and his comfort. To know that God is still there with him, even though he suffered. As we look at the, the scriptures as to what was actually going on with David at this time, David, he's fleeing Israel, and one of the things that happens, there's a lot of people that go with him, people who were loyal to him, so he wasn't traveling on his own. But he's going with these people, and one of them, uh, this priest named Zadok, is coming out and with some of the other priests, and they've got the Ark of the Covenant with them. They're like, all right, where are we going, David? And David says, nope, you're not coming. He says, go back. And he says this, exactly. He says, take the Ark of God back to the city, and if I find favor in the Lord's eyes, he'll bring me back and let me see it in his dwelling place again. But if he says, I am not pleased with you, then I am ready. Let him do to me whatever seems good to him. You see, David here putting his trust in God, not in the results that God will give, but just in God himself and the choices and the things that God will do. Whether it's what David wants to be restored to Jerusalem or not. I trust him in this. Like I said, David was far from perfect. But when the Bible describes him as a man after God's own heart, this is the type of thing that is describing. That even in the, the difficult times, David is turning to God. Even when David has committed the sins that cause these things, he turns to God. And he looks to him. He's trusting in God's decisions. He's trusting in the goodness of God, no matter what. And we see this in our text from the psalm when David says, I lie down and I sleep. I wake again because the Lord sustains me. I will not fear, though tens of thousands assail me on every side. And in that we see the trust that David is placing in God. Not only that he says, you know, I will not fear even though all these people are coming out to get me. What really caught my eye was the first part. I lay down and I sleep. I lay down and I sleep. I've gone through some difficult times, times when we didn't know if we were going to be able to pay the bills. I've had, we, I'll tell you, we, we lost our first child. I've right? gone through some suffering. I've gone through some things that I caused myself, that I've rightly earned. And you know, the one thing that wasn't there most of the time was sleep. 
There was a lot of tossing and turning. There was a lot of wrestling in my mind with what was going on and trying to understand what was happening, trying to put it all together. And to hear this, David say, I lie down and I go to sleep. Even though there's all these people coming after me, I can lay down in peace. Why? Because I know if I wake, it's because the Lord has sustained me. And I wake up because God has sustained me. And that is us every single day. Whether we realize it or not. See, when things go well in our lives, we, we, we all, yay, God, praise God. Look how good God is. God loves me. That's awesome. But when things don't go our way, is not God still good? Does he not still love us? Is he not still trustworthy? Indeed, he is. The same God that we praise when things are going the way we want it to go is the same God who loves us and walks with us when things are not. When things are difficult. When things are suffering. The peace that we have from God is one that he gives us and it comes from knowing that God is good and wise no matter what is going on. It's that thing that David expressed when he said, you know, if God brings me back, okay. If he doesn't, okay. Because I know that he loves me and I know that he is good. Our temporary situation doesn't change the goodness of God or the fact that God loves us or his power to deal with it. God still loves us. Even death itself cannot keep God away, cannot change who God is and the love that he has. Even death itself, he brings us through. Remember, he is a God who knows suffering. He endured the suffering of sending his son to die, and as Jesus, he suffered through that death. He knows what suffering is. And he knows that we will suffer. But he promises to be there with us, to walk through it. He doesn't promise to take us out of the fire all the time. I'm reminded of uh, uh, Daniel in the lion's den and Shadrach and Meshach and Abednego. You know, these are these miraculous things where they, you know, Daniel is thrown into the lion's den and God brings him out safely. But he didn't stop him from being thrown into the lion's den. Same with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Right? thrown into the fiery furnace, they still had to go through the fire. But he was there with them, and he delivered them. God delivers us. He doesn't do it necessarily on our timetable. He doesn't do it necessarily in the way we would want. And sometimes we're more about demanding what we want than accepting what God wants to give us. And trusting that what God will give us is good. That he truly does love us. And also that not all of our suffering is because we've earned it, if you will. Right? In our epistle reading from Second or from uh, Peter, it says, Don't be surprised when there's suffering, when you're sharing in the same suffering that Jesus suffered. Remember, we live in a fallen world. And it was a fallen world and a fallen people that killed the author of life. Those people are still the ones that we are sent to with this beautiful gospel of our salvation, the suffering that Jesus endured to bring us through. But there will be times when we have to walk through the fire. But know that God is with you. He will not forsake you. He will bring you through. He can still be trusted. He still loves you. He will deliver you. You can go to him for it. it. may not be in the way that you want or in the timing that you want, but he will deliver you even if it's on that last day when we stand before him. And he says, death doesn't have any power over you anymore. Amen.